some people go vegan, some are vegetarian, and then there are pescatarians. So many labels. I understand the confusion, but the point is, what's the difference? Professional bodybuilder Tori Washington sat down with Dr. Derek Papp, and here's what he had to say. Well, there are different labels that people have for diets. Some people say they're vegan, some people say they're vegetarian or pescatarian. My sister and brother-in-law are pescatarian. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between these, and do you like using labels? Wow, that's a fully loaded question that if I had more time to answer. <laughs> so when it comes to labels, I don't like labels. You know, I think sometimes they box you into yeah. a specific way where it doesn't give you leeway or flexibility to do things that may not be part of that label, but are part of your character. Okay. You know, because I don't like to be restricted. Sure. And I think feel like they do restrict people. And so oftentimes this, the vegan label can be restrictive in that Oh, you got to be this way and that. If you don't, if you're not raw, then you're not truly vegan. You're not full, fully homeopathic or what have you. Uh, and and I don't like those type of labels. So yeah. another thing I don't, I don't typically use in my when I speak is diet. Okay. Diet to me is that another. was going to be my second loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel that two things about diet. The one, the one thing is you get on a diet, you can get off a yeah. diet. The second part is I'm not ready to die yet. I'm here okay. to live. That's what we're here. We're here to live and thrive. I like so that. That's how I look at it. I like that. So would you say what we eat should be considered more of a person's lifestyle, or is it like what we eat? Well, yes, because your lifestyle is your lifestyle. It's your journey. So you know, we all should look at a way to make it to our best, best, best self. Sure. And whatever that journey may be, some people don't like to consume sweet foods or things like donuts yeah. or what have you. And that's just them, but they shouldn't de demonize someone that does that. You know, even someone who eats tofu and someone that doesn't like tofu. Yeah. You know, so we get that a lot where people feel that if, you don't, if you're not doing it my way, then you're not doing it the right way. So kind of on that note, when it comes to eating plant-based foods, do you see any personal benefits for your health um, or for your bodybuilding? Yes, you know, because I'm 102 years old. <laughs> so, you know, I don't look it. So. Now <laughs> you think you look great. <laughs> but yes, when... As, as a plant-based, you know, eating plant-based life, my plant-based lifestyle has definitely helped me out a lot yeah. in the sense that my energy levels are always doing well. I yeah. recover better. I've, I can say I've gone through competing and training and without having much injury. And the injury that came was not because of exercise. It was just, you know, a misstep or something of that nature. Okay. But my body has always responded very quickly to healing. My immune system has been very powerful. And I credit that to my eating lifestyle. Okay. No, I think that's great. You know, so on top of all these health benefits like losing weight and heart health, some plant-based foods have phytochemicals with, which help ward off certain diseases and, and possibly even cancer. Take a look at this package. I just want to remind our viewers, if you have any questions for either Tori or myself, please call and use the toll-free toll number 855-796-4475. So going plant-based can provide you with more than just health benefits. It also kind of helps the environment and the community, yes, right? Yes. Can you explain to us why this is? So if you look at it, you know, there's a lot of information out there that talks about how living a plant-based lifestyle helps the, the planet with consumption of water, mm -hmm. you know, less gases are released to the environment to the 
environment when it comes to ag animal agriculture. Right. Animal agriculture is one of the biggest component proponents of causing all this mass destruction right. that we have. In and why, that, why is that, just to explain to our viewers? Well, one, of, one thing is, you know, using up so much land. Uh -huh. And second, you know, they're, cre they're utilizing GMO soy uh -huh. in order to feed these animals. Now, when you feed these animals, you're just mass producing. It's like mass production of cars. So all this mass production and waste presents a lot of gas and destruction. Right, gas the and destruction because they are animals. They exactly. So. Yeah. Methane gas, exactly. Now, uh, how, you know, so what, would you say that there are a lot of misconceptions about living a plant-based lifestyle? Oh, yes. And could you tell us some of those? You know, when I first started, one of the main ones was where to get your protein. Right. And I always wanted to respond in more of a sarcastic way, like, do I look like I'm missing protein? Yeah. You know, but I had to hold back and say, you know, well, protein is in everything. 99.9% .9 of fruits and vegetables contain protein. And what the misconception is that you need so much protein in order to be an average individual. And that's not the case, you know. So to realize even a full-size watermelon contains about 20 to 28 to 30 grams of protein. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, most people don't know that yeah. because they think fruit doesn't contain any bit of protein. And the protein in fruit and vegetables may not be as huge, of mass, such a massive amount as a piece of steak or something, but it does have it and you don't have to consume as much. So I always tell people to look at sometimes at the, even the ingredient label on your package of food or what have you. Okay. When you see the protein amount based on yeah. a 2,000 calorie diet, yeah. the percentage is usually very high even when the protein amount is not, not that much. Well, we actually have a graphic looking at a, a couple different foods that are sources of protein right. that are plant-based. Um, do you mind taking us through these? So you know, lentils, edamame, tempeh, black beans, and almonds. All of them, I, yeah. I love them all. One of the ones that I typically do the most is tempeh. And okay. tempeh because it's, it's a fermented protein, but it's also a good source of protein for those looking for just a good amount of protein without the overconsumption of the carbohydrates. Because okay. sometimes as a, as, a physique, as a physique, bodybuilder, fitness <clears throat> enthusiast, we're looking for protein versus carbs when it comes to getting our body into a lower fat look mm -hmm. by the time we get ready to compete. And sometimes with the carbohydrate, as it brings in water with it, yeah. you want to have as much, as least amount of subcutaneous water between, between the muscle and the skin. To compete. Correct. Tori's story and how he competes in bodybuilding is so fascinating. So if you'd like to hear more from him and you want to watch his full episode, it's on the Health Channel app.